Hi everybody, welcome to today's video, Advanced Decision to Refuse Treatment, What You Don't Want. And Claire Fuller has kindly offered to share her 30 years experience in end of life care with us. Claire's worked in hospices, the community, the acute care sector as a clinical nurse specialist and at national levels as a consultant nurse for the Gold Standards Framework. Claire's also a CQC specialist advisor for end of care life and lasting power of attorney consultant. She's the founder of Speak For Me, which helps organisations to improve end-of-life care, and she provides professional and public education about palliative care, end-of-life and advanced care planning. Claire campaigns for proactive advanced care planning, and she hosts an amazing podcast, Conversations About Advanced Care Planning, planning which I highly recommend. And she's also got a fantastic website with um, some resources that she'll be highlighting today. And Claire has kindly created a clear and practical infographic with four windows that simplify advanced care planning. And she's going to focus on one of these windows today, what you don't want. And in the future, she's kindly offered to present the other three windows, which will be helpful for viewers, for students, newly registered nurses and registered nurses and all AHPs, actually. Um, so welcome, Claire. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's lovely to meet with you and to share this infographic and to talk about advanced decisions to refuse treatment. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, so I thought what would be helpful, Claire, is to um, just firstly give a recap on the infographic. And I know that you've probably got some slides maybe that you can present your yeah. slides and sort of give us an overview, if that's OK. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, that would be brilliant. So just double checking, Carol, you can see those slides before I jump into the presentation. Yes, that's lovely. Yeah. Okie dokie. So thank you so much for introducing. That was a, a lovely introduction. Um, and I'm going to talk about what an advanced decision to refuse treatment is, how you make an ADRT. I'll refer to it as an ADRT, otherwise I'm going to get tongue twisted all morning. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about the things you need to consider when making an ADRT. One question that we get asked all the time, can an attorney, a lasting power of attorney, override an ADRT? How I made my ADRT, which I really hope will help your listeners, and what advice I would give to a nurse if a patient wishes to make an ADRT? So I know these are common questions and I yeah. hope we can highlight them briefly this morning. Thank you so much for referring to the infographic because advanced decisions to refuse treatment sits in the spectrum of advanced care planning and it's helpful would it be okay if I just set the scene by yes, that's really great yeah. on, on um, advanced care planning? So you know, you've listened to the stuff that I've done before. Advanced care planning is all based on a foundation of what matters most to a patient. It is that simple. Um, once we know what matters to most to a patient, we can then build the windows, build the rest of the advanced care planning house. Oh, there with me. Windows are based on the things that you do want, most importantly, the things you do want. That might be an advanced statement of wishes and preferences. Advanced care planning includes the things you don't want, and you've beautifully highlighted that <clears throat> in your introduction, and we're going to talk about that in detail today. Advanced care planning talks about your lasting power of attorney. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> and we're going to do another session on lasting power of attorney. Yeah. It also includes your legacy, and there is a diddy window, Carol, about end of life care. But most of advanced care planning is all of this other stuff. And we can explore all of these windows in detail. But for today, we'll jump into the things that you don't want, covered by an advanced decision to refuse treatment. So let's jump straight in. What is an advanced decision to refuse treatment? It would be great if this was a live session because we could have having hands come up and answers. Quite simply, an ADRT, an advanced decision to refuse treatment, is a form which enables you to refuse any medical treatment that you do not wish to be given in the future at a point that you do not have capacity. It can also be referred to as a living will. So lots of listeners will have it referred to as a living will. And an organisation called Compassion in Dying found that most members of the public will think about it or talk about it as a living will. It's really important, Carol, to mention that an ADRT is not the same as an advanced statement. Do you remember that house at the beginning? An yeah. advanced statement can cover the things you, you would quite like to happen, where you'd like to be cared for, the clothes you'd like to wear. But an advanced decision is far more specific than that, and it is a legal document. So creating an advanced decision to refuse treatment, an ADRT, 
you have to be over the age of 18 and have, and I've written the word appropriate capacity, and we could do a whole um, video, couldn't we, on, on capacity. The ADRT must be written down, it must be signed, and it must be witnessed. And it's also got to have the statement, I confirm the following refusal of treatment, even if my life is at risk or may be shortened as a result. And an advanced decision to refuse treatment could include clinically assisted nutrition and hydration, mechanical ventilation, antibiotics for a life-threatening condition, and CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So moving on to how do you make an ADRT? There are three different ways that you can make an ADRT. DIY, do it yourself. Um, you can grab a piece of paper, grab a pen and paper and do it yourself, as long as you contain those key statements that I mentioned in the earlier slide. You can use a publicly available website called Compassion in Dying. Um, listeners can access Compassion in Dying and um, access, they talk about the living will on their website and they've got a phenomenal template that you can work through and I would highly recommend that way of doing it because it gives you the pros, the cons and the options, the things to think about. It's a great template and it, it's one way of making sure that you stick to all the things that you ought to stick to when you're making that document. You can also use a solicitor um, or an advanced care planning expert. So I mentioned, you mentioned in your introduction that I write lasting power of attorney Quite often, a lasting power of attorney and an ADRT will go side by side. So it's a natural fit. So sometimes clients I work with, I'll also help them create their advanced decision to refuse treatment. Um, I had the privilege and honour of supporting the author, Wendy Mitchell, to do her ADRT. And she kindly wrote about, it, wrote about that in her book, um, One Last Thing. So that was a wow. good experience. <laughs> so that's how you make an ADRT, an advanced decision to refuse treatment. So what are some of the things that you need to consider when you're making an ADRT? Really important, Carol, it is not a tick box. I mentioned on the earlier slide that you can use a solicitor, but I found quite often the questions can be oversimplified, i.e. do you or don't you want nutrition, artificial nutrition? It's a far more nuanced conversation than that. So we have to be thinking about um, if you have um, a long-term illness, like a dementia illness, would you want, for example, artificial nutrition and hydration if you had potentially a, a sudden fall? If you, if you had a sudden accident, you had something that could be potentially reversed, or do you not want it under any circumstance whatsoever? So it's really important to think about the nuances. It is not a tick box exercise. As I've said, an ADRT requires a huge amount of discussion. It requires time to explore those complexities and those nuances within it. And I'll go on to talk about this in, in my next couple of slides, but a supporting statement of wishes and preferences is a valuable document to underpin an advanced decision to refuse treatment. Going back to that infographic that I showed you earlier, if you think about, if you can express to people what gives your life value, what gives your life meaning, what makes your life worthwhile, what are your quality statements, they're really important documents to underpin that ADRT. Um, viewers might be interested to know that um, nobody can see that I'm touching wood here. I'm in, I hope, fine fettle. I don't have, to my knowledge, a life-limiting illness other than mortality. However, I did choose to make my own ADRT because there are certain treatments and there are certain situations that I know I call them my hard lines. I wouldn't want to live through those situations. So I took an opportunity to do my own ADRT. I also find it, and I don't know what your listeners will think, but I learned by doing, and it was an incredibly beneficial learning experience to do it for myself. So I created my own advanced decision to refuse treatment using my own template. I did write a supporting statement of wishes and preferences, and that's something that I can carry on updating. Once I'd completed it, um, I was a little bit doubtful, but I, I filled in an e-consult for my GP, and I said, well, I've done my, my ADRT. Can you, can you take it from me? Can you upload it? Can you do something? And they were fantastic, Carol. They came back, they asked for an, a PDF of the document which I sent them and I'm reassured now to know that is on my notes. As time, as my life evolves, as things change, I can update that as I wish. So what advice would I give to a nurse if a patient wished to make an ADRT? Most important, Carol, listen for cues, listen for cues, don't be afraid. So if you're nursing for somebody and they say, oh my goodness, I really don't want that, pick up on that cue and is that an opportunity to explore making an advanced decision to refuse treatment. Don't be afraid. 
be aware of what is available locally. We're talking to people all over the country and there's lots of signposting, there's lots of different resources. So take time to find out what is available in your local area. How could your potentially specialist palliative care team support and advise you? Where would you go locally? And I've mentioned compassion and dying in my earlier slide, so be aware of what is available nationally. Um, our role is not to be experts in everything, but to be experts in knowing how and where to signpost. And recognise the importance of ADRs, ADRTs in advanced care planning. You mentioned in your very lovely introduction that I've had 30 years in palliative and end of life care. I could count on two hands, two hands, the amount of patients, and I'd like to be interested in your experience as well, the amount of patients that have come to me with an ADRT is very, very small. Um, but it is part of overall advanced care planning, and I think we have a professional responsibility to recognise that. <coughs> a common question that I often have is which takes priority? These are two legal documents, an advanced decision to refuse treatment and a lasting power of attorney. Which one takes priority? Quite simply, Carol, it is the document that is written more recently. So if somebody constructs a lasting power of attorney and then they create an ADRT, the ADRT will take priority. Okay. If somebody creates an ADRT and then they choose to nominate attorneys through a lasting power of attorney, the attorneys can override that ADRT and we can explore lasting power of attorney in another session. I look forward to doing that with you. My health warning for this video would be this ADRTs could be covered in a fantastic two hour session. I've given very broad highlights and I hope some key messages and takeaways. What I'd love listeners to do is to be aware, be aware of my website, my Twitter account. Um, I've put links on the page there and people can access the website to find out more. And that's speakforme.co.uk. There's blogs, podcasts, and a whole wealth of information that people can access. Um, lots of the work that I do is for free and um, lots of people say, my goodness, how do you fund and support it? I have some really generous supporters through Buy Me A Coffee. So the final slide, if anybody wants to contribute to my ongoing work, I do free slides, free presentations. Do feel free to um, support me through Buy Me A Coffee. Um, thank you, Carol. Oh, thank you so much, Claire. Um, it's a really interesting topic that's relevant to everybody, like mm -hmm. professionals, like the way you talked about setting up your own um, ARDT, ADRT, sorry, Advanced Decision to Refuse Treatment. Um, I've got a few questions just on what you said, because I think um, that, that's really interesting that, you know, some of the viewers might be interested in. I mean, the key takeaway for me, because I've written a few notes, is um, student nurses, registered nurses, nursing associates, we, we need to increase awareness about it, um, which you're doing. And it's about picking up on individual cues and signposting. And actually, you've answered that question for me because you were saying, you know, you can talk to palliative care nurses. I'm sure you could talk to GPs as well, probably about it. Um, but there's always someone that you can go to if you think someone's expressing a wish and, and has capacity to say, I don't want a nasogastric tube, for example. Um, and it is linked very closely with capacity as well. What's really interesting for me, the way that you did your own, um, and you've got an example on your website, haven't you? So if people want to do their own, but you still have to go through the legal process. Did you have to get someone to to witness it and and all you know the the process that you you sort of mentioned? But how easy it was for you to do your own yeah. PDF sent to GP. I think that's amazing. Um, and I also agree with you, not many, I've not seen, I think I've seen probably about two people that came with living will, they call them living wills, um, but essentially advanced decision to refuse treatment. And um, I, so I haven't seen that many, but I'm wondering, I'm sure that there are other countries, but I'm not sure if you know, where it's put on your notes very early on with GPs. I think in some of the Nordic countries, for example, they highlight this much early on and it's on people's notes, for example, of what, do you, do you know anything about that? I mean, I haven't looked at any research yeah. on it, but. Not enough, not enough that I want to give any great um, yeah. advice or confidence on. So there are countries that are far more cohesive, um, areas like Canada, Australia, have um, far more cohesive um, national repositories, if you like, that bring all this information together and is far more spoken about, far more publicly available. 
and healthcare professionals and the public can go to the same areas to find the same advice. Um, but yes, yeah, so we, are, we are poor, I think, in talking about it, raising awareness. Yeah, and that's what you're doing, which is, you know, mm. that's what's fantastic about your website. And I do think, I mean, if those countries have got national sort of awareness and sites that you can go to, it makes it much simpler, doesn't it? And it's all in one sort of place, really. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's it's just a really, really interesting topic. And it's something that I need to think about. Um, I mean, we've done I've done a will and I've done a lasting power of attorney, but not the advanced decision to refuse treatment, you know, and, and the living sort of will element of it. So, Claire, thank you so much. Um, do you want to give just say a little bit about some of the re I mean, obviously, you've just shown a fantastic resource of an example of one on your website. And I think for students looking at an assignment, assi Assignments, for example, if you're looking, it's not just about end of life, it's looking about being proactive about what we want as individuals and person centred care it links to. So I think that it's a fantastic area for assignments. Um, so Claire's got some fantastic resources, but is there anything else you want to signpost sort of on your website that might be of help? I know you do webinars, don't you? I do, well. I do. So I yeah. run monthly webinars. So as you know, this, we've presented a huge bit lump of information in a very condensed form but if anyone wanted to join my webinar just go to my website and click down the events section for the resources so anybody can join the webinars and I focus it on a different subject each month um, I've just um, just on lasting power of attorney and through the cycle I will do a whole hour session on advanced decision to refuse treatment so do come along to the webinars I would really urge people to give me questions as well so I blog, I, you know, I do, I learn, I blog, and what I learn, I blog about. So for example, I had a community nurse contact me with a very similar question to what we've spoken about. So they had an anonymised client who'd lost capacity and the family had power of attorney and wanted to write an ADRT, could they? Now I'll leave listeners to, under, to think about capacity and go to my blog to find out the answer to that. But if anybody has a question, contact me direct message me through um, Twitter and I'll be happy to take that question and anonymise it and share it as a blog. So you Amazing. can access my free teachings, you can access blogs, you can send me questions which I'll answer in a blog. Um, I do the podcast where I find out about a different element about advanced care planning and there's lots of resource um, on my website as well. So I'm always developing and who knows there could be a YouTube channel one day as well. Yes, hopefully. I keep. I think it'll be amazing to have it and, and, and to have all those resources on YouTube as well. And I'm not brave enough to do a webinar. I think good luck. I think you'll be amazing in your webinar. Um, but, um, you know, when you do webinars on YouTube, people can put in comments and stuff as well. But I'm not very good with IT, I'm afraid. But, oh, for doing this, you are. Oh, um, but just, um, you know, I think the webinars are amazing. And, um, you know, and also your podcast, you want to sort of Say what's on your podcast as well because that's yeah. got some fantastic resources as well thanks Cara, for highlighting that and i'm incredibly proud of the podcasts um they started a few years ago now with um, the incredible claire fisher can i just spend two minutes talking about the history because i think it is yeah of course you can yeah so claire fisher was an incredible lady who um out of the blue developed that stage four bowel cancer um, ironically she was um her job was a public policy professional campaigner. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, Claire developed the can cancer out of the blue and was suddenly faced with an incredibly um, short prognosis. So she spent what she called her retirement project in raising awareness, normalising planning ahead. She's, she did some incredible work. Um, I'd connected with Claire through Twitter. Um, she reached out um, as she became more poorly because she found herself pretty much against her wishes, Carol, in intensive care in ITU. Now, this is a lady that understood advanced care planning. She knew what to do. She was very proactive. Mm. However, she found the system sort of nudging in and sort of overpowering her a little bit. Mm. So I reached out and I said, Claire, I've, you know, I've got a podcast coming on. Let's, let's talk about this. So Claire, very kindly, because we'd had a, a rapport and we'd done a bit of work together, she said, yeah, OK. So I, I go goosebumpy still telling you this now. So Claire Fisher was the first recording. We spoke about what mattered most to Claire, that foundation for advanced care planning. Claire had twins and what mattered most to her was spending a final Christmas with her twins. What mattered most to the doctors, we need nutrition in this lady, we need to do this, we need to do that. 
and Claire had to really explain and express what mattered most to her. So I, it was an incredible honour to record that and um, that was actually three weeks before Claire died. Oh. So she, she became um, the, the first person that I recorded on a mobile phone actually. It was, it was a, a tremendous opportunity. Um, from then, I'd always wanted to raise awareness. So my goal is to improve professional understanding, raise public awareness, and normalise conversations about advanced care planning, and show that it is not one piece of paper, it is not mm -hmm. one thing. So I interview a guest each week, and we talk about a different element of advanced care planning. You may be surprised to know I'm on number 77 now. Wow. 77 discussions about advanced care planning with amazing guests. Some incredible guests like Dr Catherine Mannix, she explains ordinary dying and some some people that you may not have heard as well members of the public with incredible stories to tell so each podcast focuses on one element of advanced care planning and it builds to show that this is a whole wealth of experience this is a mm. whole raft of things not one not one thing and not one event in our lives mm. and if we can normalize it if we can talk about it earlier by the very end of our lives most of that work is done and we're not facing the situations of reactive panic. Brilliant. Oh, I mean, I, I listened to the first one and it is, it really made me really upset. <laughs> Not really upset, but it was quite sort of, um, it was very powerful. Um, I haven't managed to listen to many more, but I, I you know, when I get time, because I'm in the middle of writing up my PhD, as you know, but, um, and the website's fantastic as well. But um, I mean, that just sounds amazing. You've left this legacy, really, haven't you, from Claire? Uh, which is fantastic. So I won't keep you any longer, Claire. Um, thank you very much. And I know you're going to talk about the other three windows as well in, in different talks as well, which is really kind of you. Um, so thanks very much for today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me, Carol, and I look forward to our next session.